I am on day 12 of using DWM. DWM stands for the Dynamic Window Manager. It is one of the suckless utilities. It is their tiling window manager. And day 12, DWM, I'm loving it so far. It's been a fantastic window manager. Honestly, uh, I'm not sure if I completely agree with the suckless philosophy behind DWM and all of their tools, but DWM, it's a fine window manager. I'm actually really glad I took a look at it. I could live happily ever after in DWM. It's that good. Now, today's video, I want to discuss the status bar for DWM and how to configure this thing because it deserves some special attention. So let's get started. So the DWM status bar, how do we config this thing? Well, let's take a look at the desktop. So you see the status bar at the top of the screen. Now, DWM is one of those window managers that the status bar, the panel at the top, that's actually built into the window manager. You don't have to go get some third party panel or dock like you do in some minimal window managers. For example, you guys have probably seen some of my OpenBox config videos. OpenBox does not have a panel or dock built into it by default. You have to go grab, you know, something like Tent2 or Polybar to use with OpenBox. Same thing with Xmonad. It doesn't really have a panel built in by default. Uh, most people install a program called Xmobar to use with Xmonad, but it's not built in. You know, there's two separate packages. You have to go get the bar. Uh, same thing with a lot of other tiling window managers. Now Qtile, the panel's built in. Awesome, the panel's built in. DWM, the panel is built in to the window manager. So we're good on that. Uh, this is pretty much a default looking bar. Uh, I changed the colors and the tags at the top. Instead of being one through nine, I changed to Unicode characters. But other than that, this is pretty stock for the status bar. By default, you get no information uh, other than the workspaces you get. DWM-6.1, DWM's version number. That is all you get by default with the status bar. So how do you get useful system information like time and date? Maybe you want CPU usage, RAM usage. Maybe you want uh, connection speeds, up speeds, down speeds. Maybe you want to know the volume, network management stuff. Maybe you want to know uh, those of you that use terminal audio players like CMUS or uh, various MPD clients, and maybe you want to know what track is playing, uh, the length of the track that's playing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. How do you get any of that information up here in the status bar? Well, this is a little bit tricky here in DWM because you have to basically write a bash script to get any information in this bar. Let me show you. Before I continue, let's take a look at my DWM config. So. Let's open up the config file. This is the config.h file, uh, the standard config file. Uh, but if you look at, toward the top, you have some stuff relating to the stat status bar. You have various uh, colors, uh, fonts for the bar, but really you just have a few things you can set. There's no like built-in functionality to add any kind of widgets, like a CPU widget to show me CPU information or a uh, Pac-Man update widget to show me how many updates are available on the system or anything like that that you often get in a lot of other status bars, even like the Qtile status bar that's built into Qtile is fantastic. It has dozens of widgets that you can use in that thing uh, or a third party bars like the Polybar, which I have installed on the system, but I'm purposely trying to use the DWM status bar because I think if I started using something like Polybar, a lot of the suckless fans would start yelling bloat, bloat. <laughs> so I'm going to use the DWM status bar, but you can't really configure it. Uh, not here in the config.h file. So how you do this is, depending on how you launch DWM, a lot of people, because they have this minimal mindset using things like the suckless utilities, things like DWM, a lot of people don't have a login manager that use DWM. They just use StartX to launch their window manager. And if you use StartX, you do have a file on your system uh, called the xanetrc file. So if I go to my home directory here, this file right here, the xanetrc, I'll open it up in Vim. Uh, I don't use this file because I don't launch into my window managers using StartX. I have a 
uh, login manager. I use LightDM, so the XInit RC file does nothing for me. But if you are one of those users that uses the XInit RC, what you would do is you would write some bash script functionalities. Uh, you would basically do some while loops. I'm going to show you that here in a minute, and you would place them in this document and that would place your stuff at the top of the screen. But I don't use the XInit RC file. I have a auto start shell script for uh, DWM. So my auto start script, I, I did the auto start patch for DWM. You, you guys may have seen that on a previous video. And what this does is it allows me to create this directory here, the uh, .dwm directory, so it's a hidden directory. Oh, let me zoom in so you guys can see this. In this directory I have a file called autostart.sh and that is my auto start file. It launches Compton the compositor, it sets my wallpaper with nitrogen, and it launches the UR urxvt daemon if I want to use the urxvtc terminal. Uh, right now I'm using st but if I do use UR urxvt I like to use the daemon version of urxvt. So how do we edit my auto start config to get me any information here in the status bar? The first thing you need is you need to make sure that you have a program on your system called xset root. So if I open up a terminal and let me zoom into this terminal, xset root. What this does is it changes various things about the root window. What is the the X root window? What is the X root window? Basically imagine the whole dang monitor, right? Is the root window. Uh, now that is a very simplistic explanation of what this is, but if I man X set root, it's root window parameter setting utility for X. And it has various flags and various things you can do with it. It has this flag here, the name flag. It changes the name of the X root window, you know. Not a very useful functionality. Really, I can't think of any functionality changing the name of the root X window other than what I'm about to show you with DWM. So if I quit the man page here, X set root, and then give it the name flag, and then any name. How about. Oh, how about just DT? Now look, DT is in the top here in the status bar. Instead of the X root window being named DWM and then the version number 6.1, now the X root window is now called DT. That appears in the status bar. Pretty neat. How do we use that X set root dash name? to actually get more useful information in the status bar other than just my name. So other than just putting my name in the panel, why don't we try something a little bit more useful? So x set root space dash name and then how about a bash command? How about how about date? That's probably the most useful thing that somebody's going to want in their panel right away. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's one of the things that really bugged me about the default DWM panel because there's nothing on it, but what I really missed, I missed time and date. So right there, <laughs> you run that command, and now I have the date and the time. Now the time is in hours, minutes, seconds. You notice it's not updating. It only grabs the time, just that one instant. It never updates it until maybe you run the command again. Now we need this to run every few seconds or every minute, whatever we want it to. And we need to put this actually in some sort of auto start script like I'm going to do, or those of you that use X in it, RC, uh, place this in that file. So let's edit this auto start shell script to get this X set root dash name date command going all the time, right? So I'm just going to add this what we call a while loop in bash scripting. So while true, semicolon, do, and then what do we want it to do? Well, we want it to x set root dash name, and then, of course, date, right? And then we could just leave it like that, but how often do we want this command to, to, to run? Well, you could do sleep, 
one second. Sleep every one second. So run the command, sleep for a second, then run it on the next second. So it's going to run every second. For something like just grabbing the date, that's probably not too taxing on the CPU. Just have it update every second. If you wanted to not tax your CPU quite as much, you could go 10 seconds or you could even do update the time every one minute. The time only changes every one minute anyway, unless you're showing seconds. So that might be what you want to do. If you want to, you can comment this thing. Update the time every minute. And then, of course, the last thing you need to do is done. And then give the ampersand. I think that should work. Right, quit, and restart DWM. And now, instead of having to manually enter that, you should get the time the next time you load DWM. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to log out and log back into DWM and see if I have the time. So I logged out of DWM and logged back in. And look at the top. Basically, it runs that, that shell command, right? The date command. Now it places that in the window. Now, for those of you that are familiar with bash scripting, this is really interesting because think about anything that you can open a terminal and enter in the terminal and get some kind of output, I can have that outputted right into the status bar. That's pretty neat. The downside of that is you have to know some bash scripting to do this. So this is going to be a little tough for those of you that are not familiar with programming at all or bash scripting at all. Most tiling window manager, most panels, uh, third-party panels, or even the panels built into tiling window managers, you usually don't have to do any real programming. Usually they have widgets that are kind of baked in. You have kind of simple things that you, you add to the config file to get these things to appear in the panel, but you don't really have to do that while loop that I had to do that in that bash shell script. Um, but... It is what it is here in DWM. That's what we have to do. That's what we have to do. Uh, that's my config.h file. I don't need that. Let me cd back into the DWM, the .dwm directory where I have my auto start file. Zoom in here so you guys can see this. So if I go back to that auto start shell script. Now, that we can do some really interesting stuff here. So I'm just going to play around a little bit. What would I like to add to the title bar? Well, I am on an Arch-based system, so I could add how many packages are installed on my system. You guys can already tell. I've got 14, 1,479 packages here. How is NeoFetch getting that? Well, it's probably running this command, pacman space dash capital Q. And it lists every package on my system. If we give it this pipe symbol and WC space dash L, basically we're going to get a count, <laughs> a line count. 1,479 packages. That's how many I have on the system because, you know, it gives me just this, this number as the output. That would be great to output into the bar. <laughs> so I could do a while loop to tell me how many packages are installed on my system currently. I, would that be useful? Maybe to some people I wouldn't find that useful. A better command would be something like, I don't know, how about check updates? For those of you that are running uh, Manjaro's what I'm on, check updates. I'll show you what this does. This could be a very long list. I think I updated recently. Yeah, I did update recently. So the only package on my system that can be updated is Chromium. Uh, I don't want that outputted. What I want is, again, a account. How many updates are available. So again, I'll do the pipe symbol. WC space dash L. One. <laughs> one update available. So having the number of updates available on my system, you know, in the status bar. I find that interesting. So what I would do is I would need to go back and edit this while loop to include uh, x set root space dash name. And then instead of just putting the date in the status bar, how about the check updates command that I just did plus that date command. So I have the updates in the status bar and the time. Now this can get very lengthy depending on how many of these little, uh, bash scripts you want in the status bar. So what I would do is I would do this script a little differently. So basically what I did here is I added, I don't know, about four new things to the status bar. We haven't launched them yet, but here is the script. So basically for those of you not familiar with bash scripting, I created four functions. First function is DTE for date. 
Uh, so a function is name of the function and then parentheses and then the brackets and then inside the brackets the command you want to run the command I want to run is of course the date command in this format so I have a specific format I want the time and date to appear in that panel that's what that date function does the update function you already you guys saw what the update function does it's the check updates pipe symbol WC space dash L that's all that does and it's gonna appear in this format with this Unicode character and then the number of updates available followed by the word updates <laughs> that way you know for example I have one update available when it runs this command it's gonna say the Unicode character followed by one and then the word updates so it says one updates that way uh, if it's just a number I have no idea what it's doing but it'll say one updates in case you know I have a bunch of stuff in the status bar and then I had a function for memory so RAM usage and then I have a function for CPU usage and then of course we need to do the uh, while loop down here except now the while loop includes x set root space dash name and then CPU and then a pipe symbol will separate the CPU from the memory pipe symbol again update pipe symbol again date let me log out and log back in and see how this auto start script works now so I logged out and logged back in and wow I've got a new DWM status bar I've got CPU RAM usage one update available time and date that is not bad for really a quick and dirty kind of hack right <laughs> we didn't spend much time on that but think about this I'm, I'm going to have fun customizing this bar because again anything that I can do at a shell prompt any whatever output that I can get at a command line I can pipe that into this DWM uh, status bar here so I can, I'm going to get creative with this I, I do like having time and date and I like having update information in the panel I usually don't keep a ton of stuff but I, I don't know I, I might come up with more stuff than just this I really don't need CPU and RAM usage in the panel but that's not bad I know a lot of people will use such a widget so I'm gonna do that and you know what I'm gonna push my auto start config file to GitLab later so you guys can that, that are interested in just copying this from me um, feel free to do so so that's day 12 with DWM again this video was all about the status bar hope uh, you guys that are interested in trying DWM find some of this useful because I know it, it took me a little while to figure out what was going on with that status bar because it, it's kind of odd that you have to basically write a shell script and then use that x set root command to get that thing you know at the top of the bar by the way x set root that package was not installed by default on Manjaro the Manjaro's i3 edition is what I installed on this machine it's what's the base of this machine was so you're gonna have to install the x set root package if you happen to be running Manjaro i3 like I am before I go this show was made possible by Ansem, Carlos, Chris, Dylan, Leor, Rob, and Tony. They are the producers of the show. They're my highest tier patrons over on Patreon. show is also brought to you by all those ladies and gentlemen, all those names on the screen. I want to thank each and every one of them for supporting the channel. If you would like to support my work, please consider doing so. You will find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.